interesting because methane's gonna sl- also gonna slow down motility. Mm-hmm. So there's always usually going to be a constipation predominant issue in people that have methane. Have you ever seen it yeah. not be more diarrhea predominant or? I feel like I have. I can't think of individual patients right now, but I feel like I have because I know I've had the conversation with people at least once or twice where people were like, yeah, isn't this supposed to be the constipation variety? And we're <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. So yeah, every right. now and then you get that. Here's the thing too, though. It could be, run with me on this and I'll play devil's advocate. Like, yes, it could be true that methane SIBO, quote unquote, I'm just going to call it that. It could be true that sometimes methane SIBO presents as diarrhea rather than constipation. Or it could be that you have two different things going on and you have methane SIBO and you also have... I don't even know. Like insert like dysbiosis diagnosis here. and dysbiosis and the Crohn's. large I mean, intestines. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah, like you're you know, insert any number of things. I just got a stool test back today on somebody who, to the best of our knowledge, doesn't have like a raging case of SIBO. We hypothesize maybe a touch, but I just got a stool bit a stool test back from a patient today from LabCorp that she has one of the funky strains of E. coli. I think it was like uh enteropathogenic E. coli, I think. Mm. Blatant infection. Right. So I, I forget what my point in telling you that was, honestly. I think they're right. Have been a point. I, the, po- the point is that you can still have diarrhea because other, other factors oh, in you. the ecology of the gut could be promoting yeah. diarrhea while you might have methane uh, IMO or methane issues in the yeah. small intestines. I think that's, honestly, I feel like that's more likely than right. saying, oh, that methane causes constipation like 95% of the time and then 5% right. of the time you're just a weirdo. Like, I have a hard time believing that. I think that it's right. probably that that is not what's causing your diarrhea and you need to hunt a little bit more. Like, maybe you have candida. Maybe you have, right. I, I mean, again, like, insert any number of, of pathogenesis here. Um, but yes, typically methane is thought to cause constipation. And what's interesting, too, is that from what I've understood so far, when you look at like a SIBO breath test, for example, and you see hydrogen, you could look at somebody who has a peak of hydrogen, say like 40 parts per million, and then another person who has like 80 parts per million, and then another person who has 8 million parts per million. (laughs) And it doesn't necessarily correlate with a degree of symptoms. Right. Right. Like I've seen this studied at least a bit where like hydrogen, like the more hydrogen you produce doesn't necessarily correlate with the degree of diarrhea or bloating or pain that you have. Right. But methane does seem to track well with the degree of constipation. So the person who has 10 parts per million methane overproduction is probably going to be somewhat constipated versus the person who has 20 or 40 or a thousand or whatever. Like the more methane you have or the more methanogen overgrowth that you have, probably that's going to track with more severe constipation from what I've seen, at least. Right. Right. So, yeah. such, such an interesting point. And I I agree. I think that um, hydrogen can be a definitely a more finicky gas um, and might not correlate with symptoms, but you're totally right. It, it seems like the severity of symptoms go up with, with the breath test result yeah. for methane. Which again, like it makes me think twofold. If the if more methane equals more constipation, from what we can tell, then again, it really makes me think that the people who have diarrhea methane problems, like I'm thinking that the diarrhea is caused by something else, and the methane right. should be causing constipation. Like when you see a linear tracking right. like that of data <laughs> points, like you could be reasonably certain that it's going to be really causing that thing. Like it's really right. causing constipation. So A, it makes me think that that idea that like some people get diarrhea from methane SIBO is probably not true. And it also right. makes me think maybe the hydrogen overproduction, maybe the SIBO itself isn't the problem that's always causing right. the pain or the bloating or the whatever in the people who have hydrogen-based SIBO. The ways that you could assess for methane are going to be either a breath test, right? So you could do a glucose or lactulose-based breath test and look for that CMO, the small intestinal methanogenic overgrowth. 
And you can start to see the beginning of the colon overgrowth too, right? Like if you have methane overproduction after like the 60 or 90 minute mark, then we're starting to think that you have colonic methanogen overgrowth. And again, like you could still do PHDG, you could still do BioGaia, you could possibly incorporate some allicin or some of these antimicrobials on board. Um, really, again, it's just whether or not you need a lot of aggressive motility support really is the difference between the two, in my opinion. But um, the other thing is that you could see this sometimes pop up on stool testing. So I, I know that this is a part, um, oh God, what is it? The Genova GI effects has the method of Brevidobacter smithii on it. And sometimes that'll show up positive. Um, I don't really utilize that test. It's very expensive and not super good for what you get, in my opinion. Um, although it has some redeeming qualities to it. The GI map I stopped using about a year ago, but to the best of my knowledge, the GI map has never had Methanobrevidobacter on it. Um, have you seen a GI map as of recently? I don't think they've added that, correct? I think they have methanogens. Really? Let me, I'm, I'm pretty sure they do. Let or me look it up. Mind. Maybe it is on there. So maybe um, that's a more new addition, or maybe I'm just forgetting it. It has, a, it has methanobacter. It has the family. Oh, okay. So okay. it doesn't Same necessarily thing. have... Whatever. Yes, yes. Okay, close enough. Um, okay, so GI map maybe is able to look at that reasonably well. Um, the way that I usually assess for it is just like a 16S based stool test typically. So something like Thrive or, you know, Ubiome back in the day would have done this or Biome site. Um, but usually on those kinds of tests, like the 16S test, you want to see method of brevidobacter showing up at like a tenth of a percent or less. 